It's chilly down here, guys. It's fall in Florida already, and that reminded me it's time to do another frozen gun video. Today's candidate, a viewer favorite, the High Point Cenon. Dude. Dude. <laughs> I've told the story a thousand times. I always thought the High Point C9 was a piece of shit until I actually torture tested the, I think the CF380 or C380, whatever the 380 version was. Beat the shit out of it. It was 100% reliable. I mean, is it kind of crappy? Yes, it's made out of zinc. Is the trigger all that great? Not really. You're limited to 10 round single stack and it's heavier than all get out, but it is still a reliable and inexpensive gun and I bear no ill will to High Point. In fact, I love the guys at High Point. Guys, if you're watching this video, I miss you. I will see you at SHOT Show. So I've got a High Point C9. It was heavily customized, as you can see, even with an RMR cut and a Duracoat job and a straight trigger from the guys at Galloway Precision, which I thought was hysterical. They even did a little custom TFB TV logo engraving on it. I thought this would be an excellent candidate. As usual, we put it in dry ice, like negative 100 and something degrees. My thermometer only goes down to like negative 60. So this thing was frozen solid all the way through. It spent around 12 hours being frozen. And then we took it to the range because we wanted to see how that surprisingly good reliability from the High Point C9 held up to the frozen gun test from TFB TV. Check it out. Ready? One second, three, two, one. It is 1 p.m. on Saturday and I'm about to stuff this High Point C9 into a cooler with all this dry ice. Oh my God. Wow. Um, this gun is not gonna work. I can tell you that already. Oh my God. Yeah, we're seriously gonna have to, holy shit, it's too cold to hold on to. It is not gonna work. It's just simply gonna be frozen shut. <laughs> this is absurd. It cycles. That's promising. Look at that. <laughs> Last round hold open works. You believe that? It, this is going to work. Guys, this is going to work. I believe in High Point. Small little Midwestern company trying to make it in the big city. Dry ice. They're not afraid of dry ice. Hammers. Mm -mm. It ain't scurred. Let's hit it. My name is James Reeves, and you're watching. Sub-Zero Torture Tests. You guys make fun of me all the time for being such a huge High Point fanboy. As you see here, this is my custom-made High Point, my tastefully designed High Point. It's, you can't even see, but it's got a, a green Cerakoted slide. It's got the old red, white, and blue mother uh, for the grips. And this one's actually cut for an RMR, believe it or not, and front slide serrations. So this is the Ferrari of high points. This is me putting my own personal gun on the line. And what Clint Smith always says to me is don't do anything to your gun that you wouldn't do to your balls. We've got, as usual, our sponsor, Federal. You guys know I love this stuff, Syntec, and I would be saying this whether or not they're a sponsor. Um, I like the fact that this reduces my lead exposure because you've got the polymer jacket and a totally lead-free primer. So, big fan of this stuff. Um, I am sure, 100% positive, that this high point is going to handle this ammo perfectly. I have not been so confident about a gun passing the Sub-Zero torture test. All right, right guy, you ready? Let's do this. All right, here we go, boys. Yeet cannon on deck. I've got full faith in the yeet cannon to do this. Let's hit it. Chamber to live round, squeezing the trigger as hard as I can. Nothing. Oh, dude. 
I think I just high point. It's chambering live rounds, but oh yeah. I think it broke. Something. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Heard me talking about it. Failure to feed on that last one. We got two rounds out of 10. Um, all the rest of them, we had failures to fire. And then at the very end, we had a failure to feed. So the high point, not living up to its stalwart reputation. Guys at high point, I'm really sorry. I mean, truly, this is an unfair test. I don't even know why I'm doing this video. This is such bullshit. Thank God I have these forward slide stations on here. Here we go, one more time. Work. But I definitely felt the trigger did not reset. Yep. <laughs> pull the trigger once, pull the trigger twice, nothing, nothing, boom. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so don't use look, look, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Here we go. Don't use high point for your Arctic operations. That's that's what I'm gonna say. That's it. Oh yeah, we got a live one in there. Just doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. So, um, we still got a live one in there. I mean, I just really need somebody to explain this to me. Let's see what that does. Yes, it will! Dude, that's all it needed. Just some love taps in the back. Slap it in the butt. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the striker. I, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly um, why this is working the way it is working. I mean, technically speaking, it just went eight out of eight. Can we all agree? Can we all agree on that second magazine? It was 100% reliable. Now, it didn't necessarily, it eventually you eventually fired it. You pull the trigger and it would eventually go off. You'd have to mash the trigger a few times, kind of uh, ram it up, but I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this thing gets an A minus. This thing gets an A minus. I mean, I was, I was doubting it. You, you heard me, I said, I, I can re-recommend this now for, for Arctic operations, wholeheartedly. I mean, it worked 100%, 100%. You just need to know, know what to do. You just gotta be patient. Clear out your calendar. Might have to bash the back end a little bit. And 100% uh, relax. That was funny. Interesting results, right? Very similar to the Glock. I think the Glock performed a little bit better and my theory behind that is because you have less mass with the Glock. You've got uh, just as robust recoil spring, but that recoil spring on the Glock is pushing a much lighter slide where you've got like a ka-clunk, ka-clunk, ka-clunk kind of reciprocating action with the High Point C9. I sent the video to the guys at High Point. I asked them what they think happened. The guys at High Point hypothesized that maybe the lube got gummed up a little bit from being frozen all day, which is completely plausible, or that the disconnector got a little bit frozen, maybe a little bit of both, a little column A, a little column B, and just giving it that little tap, tap, tappy on the back of the slide made everything run back into place. So, I mean, you're looking at exactly the same thing that we saw, and I bet this would happen with every semi-auto that we're going to run through this test. We're going to see a little bit of reluctance. The gun's going to be a little slow to go fully back into battery and just a little tap on the back will get it back into action. So, I mean, all in all, I guess pretty impressive. It didn't explode, right? It generally worked. So the high point, while it didn't perform as well as say the AK-47 or the, the Windicator revolver, right? Or even the Glock 17, which choked a little bit, still, not bad, especially for a gun that cost a little over 
a hundred bucks. Guys, thanks as usual to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, as well as Blue Alpha Gear, and your online shooting sports superstore, Top Gun Supply. If you like the channel, please subscribe or consider helping us out on Subscribestar or Patreon. We don't take money from companies like High Point to do positive videos because we're independent due to viewer support from guys like you. So hop on there and you might even win a free gun because we give away for a month. Guys, that's it for me. I'm going to go enjoy the beach. Take care.